This is the first of four maths casts in which I intend to show how we differentiate sine and cosine functions using first principles. Often when we teach this subject we introduce a couple of limits involving trig functions. We just quote the value of the limits without proof and assume that you've met them before or know something about them. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start off with the first two recordings actually deriving the value of the two required limits. The first one, which I will address here, is the limit as x tends to zero of the function sine x over x. Perhaps you've already seen this one and you know the answer. Assuming that x is in radians, the answer is 1. I'm going to prove this result and I'm also going to make quite a big thing of this thing about x being in radians. It's quite important to understand. The first thing I have to do is to draw a picture. It's going to be a picture of a sector of a circle. That means I'm going to draw two radii which meet each other at an angle and then connect them up with a circular path. I've labelled the three corners. The angle between the two radii I'm going to call x. I'm also going to assume that the circle has unit radius, r equals 1. So the lines OC and OA both have length 1. Well, what does all this have to do with those limits? It seems a bit of a strange diagram to have drawn. Bear with me for a moment. I think you'll find the proof is rather elegant. It's an example of something known as a squeezing theorem in the theory of limits. I'm going to ask the question, what is the area of the sector AOC? We know a formula for the area of a sector of a circle. It's just a half the radius squared times the angle, so long as the angle is measured in radians. That is crucially important. So here it's a half r squared, where r is 1, times the angle x. That simplifies just to a half x. There it is. To get further, I have to add some additional lines to my diagram. First of all, I'm going to construct a right-angled triangle by dropping a vertical line down from A to meet the radius OC. Temporarily, I'm going to delete those r equals 1 messages as well, just so that the diagram doesn't get too cluttered. We'll call the foot of the vertical line B. I've put back just the length OA to remind ourselves that it's 1. I want to ask now what is the area of the right-angled triangle AOB. To write that down as a function of x, we'll need to have expressions for the height BA and the base OB. Remember the area is half the base times the height for a right-angled triangle. In fact, for any triangle. How can we identify the base and the height lengths? Well, think about sine x, opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is AB, and the hypotenuse is just 1. That means that AB itself must have length sine x. Since OB is the adjacent side to the angle x, by a similar argument, it must have length cos x. So now let's write down the area of the triangle AOB. A half the base times the height is a half cos x sine x. Just one more triangle to make now, a bigger right angle triangle. I'm going to extend a vertical line up from C to meet the extension of OA. That's why I drew, drew that line a little bit too long, past A. I now want to get a formula for the area of the triangle DOC. Its base is clearly just 1. Remember, that's the radius OC. What about the height DC? Well, look at tan x. Tan x is opposite over adjacent. The adjacent here is OC, which has length 1. That means that DC itself must have the length tan x. And so the area of DOC is a half, the base, that's just 1, times the height, that's tan x. A half tan x, in fact. Well, what on earth does all this have to do with that limit? 
we have actually made progress. We've got some formulae that involve sine x, cos x, and x, and sine over cos, of course, in the tan. But these are more than just three separate formulae. They're formulae that we can compare. The area of the small triangle, AOB, is less than the area of the sector of the circle. And that, in turn, the sector of the circle, has an area less than the area of the large triangle. Let's write that down as a single line inequality. There's the small triangle area. That's less than the area of the sector. That's just a half x. And in turn, that area is less than the area of the large triangle, a half tan x. A half is a factor throughout that inequality, so we might as well cancel it off. I'm going to do that just by making it disappear now. This is a, a mathematical inequality, but in words, colloquially, we can say that the area of the sector is sandwiched between the smaller and the larger areas of the two triangles. We will use that sandwiching to our advantage shortly. To begin with, though, I'm going to take just part of that inequality, the first part, that's the cos x, sin x, and the x, and separate it off and do some manipulation with it. Considering the way I've drawn the sector, x is a positive quantity. It's an angle in the first quadrant. I'm going to assume that x is positive here. An angle in the first quadrant has a sine and a cos that are also both positive. That means that we can divide this inequality or multiply it by any of those quantities without having to reverse the direction of the inequality. If I'd wanted to be perverse, I suppose I could have chosen x in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, the sine of x is negative, and the x would also be negative. As it turns out, all the manipulations I'm about to do here still work if x is in the fourth quadrant. It's just that there's a lot of extra minus signs to consider and reversing of the inequality to consider. There's no point in my doing both cases, so I'll stick with x greater than zero and just inform you that it works from the other direction as well if x is a negative angle. So with all that in mind, I'm now going to take this inequality and divide it by some things. I'm going to divide it, in fact, by x all the way through, and then also by cos x. The result is as follows. See where that's got me? There at last is that quantity I'm interested in, sine x over x. This is an important inequality. I'm going to put a box around it. We'll come back to it in a minute. Next, I'm going to look at the right-hand side of my original inequality the x less than tan x bit. But remember that tan is sine divided by cos, so I'm going to write it that way here. This time I'm going to divide by x again, but multiply by cos x. Here's what I get. This version of the inequality is also the final form I want to use, so I've put a box around it as well. So what have we got? Sine x over x, and it's greater than cos x, and it's less than 1 over cos x. Let's write all that in a single line. So here we've learned that the quantity we're interested in, sine x over x, is sandwiched between cos x and 1 over cos x. Remember that cos x is less than 1, and 1 over cos x is greater than 1 in magnitude. Furthermore, when x is small, then cos x is actually very close to 1 just a very little bit less. That means that 1 over cos x is just a very little bit more than 1. But sine x over x is still sandwiched between those values, so it must also be very close to 1. Now picture what happens when x tends to 0. We know that cos of 0 is equal to 1. So 1 over cos 0 is also equal to 1. So actually we've now got to the result we wanted. As x tends to 0, the quantity sine x over x is squeezed between two quantities which approach 1 from either side, 1 from below, 1 from above. The only way that can happen is that sine x over x must itself have the limit 1. Let's write that down. I've now proved the result that I claimed was true at the beginning. Remember, though, this was for x in radians, 
That was a crucial part of the argument, because otherwise the area of the sector of the circle would have been different in value. This kind of argument, in which a function gets squeezed between two other functions whose values are known, is a very important type of argument in the theory of limits. It's called squeezing. The other limit I want to look at will not be quite such a long journey as this one. In fact, we will be able to use this one to make the other limit yield its secrets quicker.